Good evening, everyone. This is Nithar Amitrandra from the NR Media and our sports show back with another episode. It's a late night episode. Uh, happy Friday. I hope uh, everyone's having a great day as we head into another weekend. Uh, one week before Super Bowl week. Uh, so it's going to be a busy week for uh, next week, especially for us sports journalists, sports media people uh, getting ready for the Super Bowl. But we have a special guest today. Before we introduce her, um, fans, you already know that we are live on iHeartRadio, Spotify, on all the podcast platforms. And also, everybody knows about the speaker app on my phone where our fans can tune in and ask questions. So we'll be taking fan questions during the show tonight. And Today's guest, her name is Maria, Maria Tribal Peace. She's a multi multimedia sports journalist. She does everything. I call I call I love to call people jack of all trades, but she's the Jill of all trades. Um, so she does a lot of stuff covering sports, uh, basketball, softball, you name it. She's everywhere, all day, every day, doing her doing great work in the uh, woman in the woman in sports industry. Uh, she covers uh, for, uh, she covers FDU basketball. And she's part of the Patriot League, Patriot Softball League, which we'll get to. And also, she uh, a little birdie told me she played softball also at Fordham. So we'll get to all of that, uh, how how she got started in the sports industry, how how she got started playing softball. But, uh, Maria, thank you for joining uh, on, a, on a late night Friday. How are you and your family doing today? Good, good. We're great. Everyone's great. Um, busy, but, you know... <laughs> That's how it's always going to be when you're working in this industry. So busy is good. Yeah. So before we get started, I got two things to say. First, I want to say rest in peace, Carl, we Carl Weathers. Uh, he's an actor. Uh, he acted in the Rocky movie and uh, he passed away today at the age of 76. Or uh, So everybody knows about him. If no one knows about him, go check out his stuff. He was a great legendary actor. So rest in peace. My prayers and thoughts go out to him. But I, I, I got to give a big shout out, birthday shout out to Michael K. That's my guy, a Fordham alumni, uh, just like Maria. So happy birthday to Michael K. I hope you're enjoying your birthday. Enjoy your weekend and uh, with your family. But uh, Maria, I want to get to your journey. Uh, t tell our fans, uh, how, how did Maria Travel Peace get into the sports industry? Yeah, um, it's kind of a weird story, I guess. I, I feel like from the time I was really little, I, I always said, oh, I want to be on ESPN. Um, I feel like that's how every sports reporter's journey maybe starts at some point. Um, and then I knew, but my, my first ever dream was to play Division One softball. And so I had the opportunity to do that um, and attend Fordham University, which was awesome. And, and I would love to say that I picked Fordham um, because of academics and all these other things, but it was quite literally my only Division One offer. So I went there. Um, and it turned out to be great for what I wanted to do. So I got really lucky. Um, and while I was in college, I kind of had like what I call like my mid uh, mid college crisis where I was like, I don't know if I want to do this. I, I really want I'm really passionate about mental health and like understanding like why things happen and different things like that. And so I actually added a second major um in psychology because I was like I might want to go that route or maybe even coach one day I knew I wanted to be in sports um and so like graduation's coming around I have two majors I, I, I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do um so as some college graduates do they go to grad school um and I got into a couple different ones and I quite literally picked Syracuse um mm -hmm. because it was going to give me an opportunity to be a grad assistant softball coach and also um to do the journalism program there um which is also a fantastic program so did that um was really blessed to have that opportunity and um ended up just sticking with the journalism thing and I've been doing it ever since that was in 2020 I guess 2024 now so that's wow. kind of like the shortened version of how I uh got into sports media <laughs> oh yeah now talk about uh in high school um did when, when, when did you start like realizing that you can be in this uh, area like did you start realizing in high school or uh, take take us back to, to your high school career? Yeah, so I always love to talk. Um, mm. That's like the ongoing joke with my family. And actually, there was one um, local sports anchor who was awesome. And I kind of like expressed interest in like doing this. And um, when he would come to do like stories on our team, he'd let me like lead the interviews. And then um, he'd have me like come and shadow him and different things like that. And so I really have to give him a shout out because he kind of like really embraced me as like a 14, 15, 16 year old and just was like, hey, I'll let you be on the local news and like do this. And so um, I, I kind of sometimes even forget that I did that because so many things have happened since then. But yeah, I was actually quite involved in high school and I was actually 
um, I wrote a lot. I was really involved in the writing space before I ever got in front of a camera um, because I'd always get really nervous. Um, So I just wrote a ton and I always loved to write. And then once I got to Syracuse, that's kind of when I really started to get in front of the camera. Wow. Uh, We are live with Maria Chivopis, multimedia sports journalist. Um, We already have a fan question for you in my my phone. Uh, One of our fans wants to know who are some of the – uh, reporters that you looked up to uh they want to know on the female side oh yeah for sure um I mean Holly Rowe I feel like every young woman who's a sideline reporter at some point wants to be like Holly Rowe um but yeah for me I also looked up to a lot of analysts uh I I really love Doris Burke uh Mm -hmm. Monica McNutt I think she's fantastic I've had like the pleasure of meeting her a couple times and then uh also just Jess Mendoza probably like far and away like she's just fantastic and I think also like a lot of the women who have been trailblazers, like Susan Waldman, like, I just think like the fact that she can do that for the Yankees, it's just really stinking cool. Um, I mean, I look up to so many women in the industry, uh, but those are just a couple to name a few. And then I think my greatest mentor um, at Syracuse, her name's Olivia Stomsky. And uh, she's like the first woman to head the sports department at Syracuse. And she also like, I is is a producer like was a producer like on the biggest of shows and so like I definitely really look up to her and she's mentored me and she's like the reason that I am where I am today so big shout out to her yeah Monica McNutt I was actually on this show also we had her on the show like I think it was last year she was on the show and Monica McNutt is amazing what's she doing now with the Knicks uh play-by-play and uh, she does it with Don LaGreca you name it Alan Hahn she's she's everywhere she's truly amazing she is awesome. And she's like the kindest person, like the best personality, like just, just amazing. Like I, you know, it's really hard sometimes, like when you first start, especially to like be who you are off camera on camera. And like, she is so consistently her and just so good and so intelligent. And like, she just makes you want to keep watching or listening. And you know, she's just one of the best. Yeah. So tell her fans, Murray, you brought up a good point. You brought up mentors and I have four mentors in my, in my journey currently, but for you, how important it, how important is it to have mentors, especially in our business in the sports industry, to that can lead you to multiple opportunities, open doors, and just tell our fans about that process. Yeah, I think one thing that's like I, I think that some people get really caught up in like, oh, I need like one singular mentor. And it's like we have this idea that your men- the mentor is like your sage and they're gonna answer and know the yeah. answers to everything. Although I do think Olivia Stomsky does know the answers to pretty much everything. But I think like the one really great thing is like you have a lot of mentors and you have a lot of people who are helping you and speaking about you in rooms that you're not in that you might not even realize. And I think that I would even say it's less important about mentors and like more about like the relationships and just about like being kind to each other and just like leaning on people, asking questions and like being grateful for people who are willing to help you. Because I think that like, it's just so important. Like any opportunity I've ever gotten has come from somebody um, who like gave me a chance that like maybe didn't have to give me a chance and so I think that like that's just so important I'm, I I can't express how grateful I am for some of those people like I'm doing something tomorrow which you ch- I guess I'll plug myself but I'm doing something tomorrow so if you check my social media you'll see what I'm doing um, but that opportunity came from another great mentor of mine who has like given me so many opportunities like within the last two years um, and that also started when I was in grad school and he has just been like so awesome with just taking chances on me and so I think I'm so grateful for all of that as well because I just think relationships and mentors are so important so a special announcement tomorrow huh? <laughs> it's not like huge but it's just I, I don't know if I'm like able to say what I'm doing but I'll be able to say tomorrow so <laughs> don't want to give anything away <laughs> um yeah so tell our fans uh uh, take us back to your first opportunity in front of a camera uh, you mentioned earlier that you, some, you, in the beginning you were nervous but take us take us to your first interview you did and uh, talk about that and um, how nervous were you uh, during doing your first interview but afterwards you must have felt great yeah it's so weird um I feel like I mean I was on camera a lot in high school and then like just even in undergrad for like just sports types things uh, but I remember like I actually didn't take like an on-camera class at Fordham until I was a senior. And um, one of my uh, teammates at the time told me like, yeah, you're really not good at this. Like you should, you should probably not be in front of the camera. Like (laughs) she was very honest. Um, And I remember like thinking about that and like still wanting to do it for some like crazy odd reason. Um, 
And so I think like when I got to Syracuse, they really pushed me on my comfort zone to like everything was on camera um, and I had to do it. And so I just think those reps like got better and better. And like, I still need to be better, but you're just constantly trying to improve. Um, I don't know if I necessarily remember my first interview, but I remember like a million times that I've messed up on camera and still do to this day. Um, Cause I don't think that ever really goes away, but it, it gets, I'd like to say it gets easier and I don't really get nervous. I get really excited now. Mm -hmm. Well, we have another fan question for you. Uh, one of the fans wants to know uh, if you were not, if you were not in this business, they want to know what would, what, what would you be doing now? Oh, I'd be a division one softball coach. That's oh, yeah. an easy answer. Cause I still think about doing that to this day. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, that's like the easiest answer. Cause I think that's like, I actually really thought that that's where I was going to end up. Um, but yeah, so I know exactly what I would be doing. <laughs> Speaking of softball, yeah, take us to tell our friends about your softball journey. And obviously you play softball at Fordham with Kelly and Gigi. Uh, and would you consider you guys self the big three of there in Fordham softball? I don't know if we were the big three. Maybe we had the most personality. Um, there were some really good players that we played with throughout the years, um, especially some of the women who came before me. Uh, some of those Fordham softball teams were fantastic. Uh, just, oh my goodness, some of my friends were just so dang good. Uh, but I think I was very average. and I'm lucky that I just had an opportunity to be on the team and win a couple rings. <laughs> wow. Um, <clears throat> tell, tell our fans um... – what, when was it, what, uh, what was it like your, in your softball journey? And do you, you, did you uh, get to play like multiple positions uh, in, in your softball career? Yeah. Yeah. So I came in as an infielder um, and I didn't really play that much my freshman year. And then they moved me to the outfield because I could run decently. Um, and then I played outfield for most of my career. I also had a couple of pitching debuts, um, mm. <laughs> debuts. That's not the pitching appearances, I guess. Um, that was quite terrible, but we had nobody, everybody else was hurt. Um, but yeah, no, I just think like, I don't know. I, I still think playing softball at the collegiate level is like the best thing that I'll ever do. And I just like miss it every single day. And like, I think that, um, it was really dang hard. And I think that it has prepared me so much for what I do now. And like, there's like, I definitely don't miss like 6am conditioning and like 5am lift and like practicing for eight hours a day um and like being sweaty and going to class and just being tired all the time but like if I had an opportunity if they said you know what like you have two more years of eligibility I'd go take it like in a second um I will like forever miss it and I just think that like yeah like I nothing really like and there's a lot of crappy stuff about college athletics so that could be a whole different interview in and of itself but yeah. um yeah that like softball and playing softball was like will always forever be like the thing that I love the most um and so that's like kind of why I am still in sports and that's why like I hope in the future I can like do even more softball stuff because like nothing feels like home like softball does um and yeah I miss it I wish I could still play <laughs> I mean, you can still play I mean I, get... I do I, I do play a little bit I teach hitting lessons um I'll play in the summer sometimes so but nothing's the same as like putting on a uniform for a school no you were you were like uh pitching and hitting you're like Troy Tani. And so, yeah, and uh, he's a little bit better than I was, I have to say. And he makes a lot more money, so <laughs> I don't, not, not a great comparison. <laughs> uh, we have another fan question for you. Uh, by the way, thank you to all the fans for tuning in tonight on a late night Friday. Uh, they want to know your favorite food. Favorite food? All of them. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I like I like all kinds of pizza, but I don't eat it that much. Um, because there's like not enough protein in it. So, um, I guess like a good, like chicken and rice bowl with like lots of veggies and like maybe some good, like guacamole. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Yeah. So talk about, um, the sports and Jersey and overall and, uh, where you are at too. Also and talk about the growth of the talent here in Jersey, like, uh, like for example, like Syracuse, FU, and Fordham, and all the New Jersey schools, college, high school. So just talk about the growth of the local sports here in New Jersey and Philly and like New York. I mean, I feel like I I'm not the expert on the growth of them, so I don't want to like totally answer that question. But um, I guess I could probably talk more about like the just the excitement maybe more yeah. around like 
mid-major schools. I, I just think I, you see a lot of parity in college um, basketball. Um, and I think that's really awesome. Um, I could speak like direct. I mean, if we're talking about like Jersey basketball and FDU and making it through March Madness, like that's really cool. Um, and I just think like in general, like so many like top seeds have been upset this year, especially like on the men's side, on the women's side, you see it like growing so in, like incredibly, like, you know, LSU is losing games. They won the national championship last year. Um, UConn who would win a hundred yeah. games in a row doesn't win as many games, which is like, not because they're bad necessarily, but because other teams are getting better. And I think that's amazing. Um, especially, um, in the sport of softball, um, if you, <laughs> I'll, I'll be tweeting about it and posting it on social and, you know, all my coverage is going to really highlight just like the growth of softball and like the, the, how the gap is getting smaller and smaller between power fives and mid majors, because I just think that like, you're going to, you see it in the regionals, you see uh, like Boston, U, who's in the Patriot league. They were, they won 50 some games last year and they actually towards the end of the season broke the top 25, which is awesome for a mid-major conference school um, in the top 25 at the end of the season. And like, they earned that spot. They beat a lot of power fives and different things like that. And so I don't know if I can necessarily speak to like Jersey growth, but I could speak to like the growth of like college athletics and how um, the gap is getting smaller in my opinion. Yeah. Um, throughout. Yeah. Speaking of the Patriot uh, League, talk about how did you get the opportunity with them, and um, uh, and what's it been like for you just to be part of that league and the sport you the, the sport you love playing, and now you get to cover it, and also um, talk about your your experiences uh, as a softball player to the to them. So, what's that been like for you? Yeah. Um, I am so grateful every single day that I get to work for the Patriot League. It is just such a cool college conference of such incredibly talented student athletes, but also just incredibly intelligent and kind and like service driven human beings. Um, we do uh, so many feature stories. That's a big part of my role yeah. um, on what they do kind of beyond the field, beyond the court, all that stuff. Um, and just getting to do that is fantastic. Um, the people that I work with and work for are like the best, um, you know, and I just think that like, I am so grateful every single day that I get to say that I'm the multimedia journalist of the Patriot League. Um, yeah. And like just the journey here, I started in local news. And so it was again, from like a relationship that I made with um, my current boss now, and just like working um, through that and like, also just like staying in contact with him and then him again, giving me an opportunity to come here and do this. And, and yeah, I just think it's amazing and I'm grateful for it. And I get to cover some really cool people who do some really cool things. Yeah, so whoever doesn't know about the Patriot uh, League, uh, if you if you don't mind explain uh what's the process like with that league and how how does it work? Yeah, yeah, it's just like a norm it's a we're a Division 1 conference. Um okay. normal um Division 1 conference uh, just like how every other one works. <laughs> um, if that makes sense. like I don't I don't really um but I guess I could tell you yeah. like some of the schools like in it um one one really cool part about it is both uh the United States Naval Academy and Army West Point are in our conference um, for every sport except football, because in football, oh, they have FBS. Yeah. Um, and so like those like Army Navy games are amazing. Um, they just played the Army Navy basketball game. And it's like the atmosphere is amazing. It's so cool. Um, we have like some our, our lacrosse teams are, are not only just great within our conference. They're some of the top lacrosse teams in the nation. Um, Loyola, Maryland uh, women's lacrosse is actually number nine um, in the preseason poll. Um, our men's teams um, are always, we usually have a couple in the top 25. So it's really elite on the lacrosse side. And then just, you know, um, in all of our sports, we have like a lot of really talented athletes. Like I said, BU softball was in the top 25 last year. So just your normal college conference, but there's also a really big focus on academics at a lot of our institutions. So um, that's where you're getting like all of these like service driven um, student athletes, uh, just people who really care about like the community internships. Like I interviewed a kid who, um, or sorry, a student athlete who was like basically trying to solve, um, like basically disprove theories in physics and was doing like experiments on that. And then it's just, it's all really interesting stuff that is kind of beyond my comprehension. I say I get smarter every time I do an interview because of how intelligent these student athletes are. Wow. Um, we have another fan question here and this is a good one. They want to know, out, out of all the stadiums you've been at covering games, what would you say the best atmosphere is? Ooh. 
Um, this is one wasn't when I was covering a game. I was 14 and I was playing in a softball tournament um the week after the women's college world series. So I got to like be in uh, I actually went to the women's college world series national championship game and it was like the coolest thing. Um the environment there is insane in Oklahoma City and it's just grown even since then. Um but yeah, that was one of the coolest places I've ever seen or been um, in a game. And the final four um, in Energy Stadium, I've just never seen that many people um, wow. at a basketball game. Uh, so that was really cool as well. Yeah, you, you um, not only you did basketball, you've done a lot of uh, basketball broadcasts. And also you've done uh, some, you, you, you had an opportunity with the New England Patriots to uh, uh, talk about that experience and that 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 must have been fun uh, doing some work for the Patriots. Yeah, yeah. So that was like my internship in grad school. Um, it was really cool. I worked for WPRI, um, who is a uh, Providence station, and um, it was actually during COVID, so it was really weird. So we only had like limited access and different things like that. But it was really interesting to cover like a professional team. It was also a really interesting year because it was the first year that Tom Brady was going to be gone yeah. uh, and Cam Newton was the quarterback. And so everybody was like really uncertain, like, um, and there's also a lot of uncertainty with COVID and different things like that. So it was a really challenging, but like fun experience um, getting to cover a professional team. And like also, at a time where they were like one of the best teams in the NFL to like going to so much of like what's going to happen next. Was it, um, was it cool just to cover a story where you don't know if Tom Brady's going to go back to the Patriots or leave and go to another team? Was it, you, you, you I, I feel like you were there at the right time because it was a big topic around that Boston area and fans are, we're waiting on pins and needles waiting for Tom Brady, what's seeing what to do. But he eventually left, but were, were you, would you say that was a like a like one of your uh, best stories to cover because it, it was a hot topic? So the one thing that stunk is he was already gone by the time oh, I got there. so okay. so the my coverage was more of like Cam Newton's here and yeah. um this is what we're gonna see what Cam does and how uh he like kind of fits in with the Patriots. So if I was there for the thing yeah. that you mentioned, for sure that would have been really fun to cover. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of best moments, tell our fans some of your best moments in your career because I saw, I mean, you covered a lot of games throughout your career, but you had an interview with Jalen Hurts. Uh, yeah. um, so talk about that and also some of your other best moments. Yeah, no, that was, um, it was amazing. Um, so I, I, I also do, I work for um, somebody called the Maxwell Football Club. So I do all of their social media and um, I had the opportunity to do their social media for their gala and also um, host it. And it was last year, so it was like the Eagles had just lost the Super Bowl, but um, we had him win our Player of the Year award, and Sirianni won our Coach of the Year award. And I don't really get nervous for a lot of interviews, but I was certainly nervous for that one be just because of like how fantastic he was the year before. And like I don't know, but he is exactly like who you would think he is, like just a really good, kind human. Um, so he, that made it a lot better. But yeah, definitely one of the coolest moments to also interview him at a time like where he was even more prominent than like he might have been like this year. Not that he's not, but like it was just like at the peak of like his popularity. So it was, yeah, I can't really describe that. I also think I like kind of blacked out for a little bit of it because I was just like, so, oh my goodness. Like, and I don't usually get too starstruck like with people, but it was just like, wow, like I, I have a lot of respect for him and the way that he like overcame like a lot of adversity and people talking like, bad things about him so I just think like he was really cool and um if you don't mind just take us to like what he what he, what he, he talked about and uh, obviously he's done he's doing a great job on the field but off the field he, he does amazing stuff off the field with the, with uh some ch a charity I think or does off the field work in Philadelphia Philadelphia but just talk about the interaction you had with him yeah no it was awesome um yeah he does a he has a whole female like staff which was really cool getting to work with them uh, Nicole Lynn is like such a boss and like just somebody else that I really look up to. So like the fact that I could email back and forth with her, like, okay, like we're going to need Jalen at this time. Like that was really cool for me. Um, and then just, you know, talking about like, um, his family was there, the award that he was winning from us that night and just su super simple, but just like talking about celebrating the year that he had and different things like that. Uh, we have another fan question for you. Uh, how many bloopers do you have? 
Oh, too many, way too many, <laughs> <laughs> many more than I would like, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. So tell our fans, talk about the growth of women in sports and um, it's big time. Now you're seeing a lot of females getting front office jobs or coaching male sports. Now I'm still waiting to see Becky Hammond get her opportunity to coach in the NBA. I want that to happen. I, I hope it happens. Um, but just talk about the growth of it. Um, I have 14 people underneath my company currently and five of them are female. So I'm giving every opportunity to females to join my company and, and, and work in the sports industry. So just talk about the growth of you for you guys. Yeah, no, I, I think it's amazing. I think even just in like my lifetime, I mean, I'm not that old yet. At least I like, I don't like to think that I'm that old yet. Um, but just even seeing, I, I keep going back to softball because that's like a prime example in my head, but like that national championship game I'm talking about, we just like walked in and could sit wherever we wanted. Like now those tickets are sold out in advance. They had to build extra seating at the women's called world series. Like that's really freaking cool. Um, you're seeing all the numbers with women's basketball. And I just think like the opportunities as well are there. Um, and I just think that it's amazing, but like, we're nowhere close to where we need to be. Um, so it's like great, like being grateful, but also knowing that there's still a lot of work to be done and it's continuing to celebrate women in sports and like take those opportunities. Hmm. Yeah. So you know, people have bucket lists. Uh, I I had a bucket list too, and my goal was to cover Paige Buker in my career, and I finally did it uh, a couple of weeks ago. So for you, did you have any like on your bucket list? Do you uh, did you have did you cross off any like big moments on your bu bucket list yet? If you have, have you had any? Um, it's weird. I keep like a like I write my goals <laughs> down on like a sheet of paper that I put on my fridge, and um a lot of them like came to fruition last year, I would say, but like, it doesn't always happen in like the way that I might see it, but it happens if that makes sense. So I don't know if I necessarily have a bucket list of things, but all I do know is like, I want to cover the women's college world series. Um, that's probably the only thing that's ever been on my bucket list and I've never done it. So I've done a lot of really cool things, especially last year. Like I, I did my first women's sweet 16. Oh, I did wow. my men's final four men's national championship game. Um, I got to cover UConn um, in their championship parade. Uh, I've gotten to call games on national networks. I've gotten to do stuff on regional sports networks. Uh, but I really, I not, I don't only want to like cover the women's college world series. I want to call the mm. women's college world series. Like that is my like one thing on the bucket list. And I'm sure many people have that dream. So it's, it's tough, you know, but yeah, I don't have a list. I have one thing that I want to do. <laughs> oh, knowing you, Maria, uh, by the show, you, you're going to make it happen. I, I, yeah, we I hope, hope so, right? <laughs> I, hope, I hope you get that chance to call games. Uh, that, that'd be an amazing opportunity for you. Um, we, have, we have another fan question for you. They want to know who is the funniest person that you work with right now? Right now? I don't know. I work with a lot of people. That's like a, oh, that's really tough. I don't know. I have like a small office at work and I really don't know. I have to think about this. I'm thinking of like my funniest teammate like back in college, who's like still one of my close friends, but is it Gigi? I don't think I have an answer. No, it was Gigi's Gigi's like a, just a great personality. Yeah. Oh, she's but like one of our mutual friends is just funny. Like she just makes me laugh. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't have an answer for you on that one. Ooh, okay. That's a that's gonna be to be continued. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so just talk talk about how great are you to be in this position right now and starting like all the way from your journey so starting the journey and seeing where you're at now and doing unbelievable stuff in your career just talk about that moment like the journey and making your parents proud and I'm sure your parents are proud too but just talk, talk about that journey yeah um it's funny last night I was like leaving my game at FDU and I was telling uh the guy who I did play by play with he was like asking me what my like what my schedule was and I was like oh I was thinking about it and I was like yeah I'm not off until March 18th and he was like, what? And I was like, I have something every day until March 18th, whether it's like stuff with the Patriot League or like some freelance stuff. And he was like, when do you eat? And I was like, I don't know. I was like, I just know that like I started off in local news and like it was such a great experience. It was in like a very, very small town with fantastic people. But like, I just remember being there and being like, dang, like I really hope like I can make it to the next level. And I still don't think I'm at the level that I want to be at, but like, 
I think that like where I am now, I need to sometimes like take a step back and be like, oh, this is like really stinking cool that I get to like do this every single day. And I just, I am so grateful, like even on the days when it's like really, really hard and like my head hurts or if like I mess something up because I do have so much stuff going on. I'm just like, this is, this is my life and this is like my job. And, and when I get to like be in those like big arenas or like, you know, you get to find a cool story that's like maybe going to impact someone or like you give someone a voice that didn't have it before. That's like really, really cool. And I think about like where I started and all the times that I thought like I wasn't good enough to like be in some of these places. And like the next minute I'm interviewing Jalen Hurts and that's really cool. So it's kind of like being grateful every single day even like, like today I was like really tired. I really didn't, (laughs) I really didn't want to do what I had to do, but I did it anyway, because like, dang, like two years ago, I would have killed to do what I'm doing right now. Yeah. And, um, I'm sure like you got like, and sometimes with the long calls, it must be hard and all and everything, but talk about your, tell our fans about your, uh, how do you balance your schedule, uh, out? Because, uh, there's a time where you can have fun also, but just to tell our fans, how do you balance your schedule up? Um, I don't think I'm a good person to answer this question because <laughs> I don't really balance it. Um, so I, uh, I just say yes to too many things and then I cry about it a little bit. Um, but you always get it done. And so I just have this like idea that I will always figure it out. Um, sometimes I figure out, figure it out messily. Um, I am working on balance. Um, and that's something I'm learning how to say no. But I think when you like first start out, you just say yes to everything because anything can lead somewhere else. Like a lot of, I, I got to do Athletes Unlimited mm-hmm. um, call games for them. And I started out cutting highlights for them. Wow. Like literally just doing like, like really tedious, tough work. And then I got to be on camera. And that was like a three-year process till I finally got to do that. So like, I just struggled to say no. Cause I'm like, oh, if I say no, like maybe that, I'll miss out on something in the future. Um, so I just think for me, um, trying to balance, um, as long as I can get my workouts in and call my mom and dad at least once a day, whatever else I do, it, it's fine. I don't really have like that. That's kind of how I balance, so to speak. <laughs> uh, we'll take one more fan question here. They, uh, one of our fans wants to know what advice would you give to someone that wants to get into the same business, uh, as us? Ooh lots of advice we could do a whole interview about that um (laughs) but I would say that if it's something that you really want to do uh two things um focus on you because comparison is the thief of joy uh this industry gets really competitive and um it's really easy to get caught up in like oh they're younger than me they're doing more than me like they're they're farther along I should be farther along Uh, If you can just always remember that comparison is the thief of joy and you need to focus on yourself and how far you've come, that's going to keep you sane. Um, And and then I think also uh, you need to have an unshakable belief in yourself because this is a very subjective industry. So no matter, you could be the best dang reporter, best dang writer, broadcaster, whatever in the world, there's still going to be people who don't like you. So if you can figure out how to like yourself, be okay with yourself and just believe in yourself, because there's going to be times when you get like 10 people telling, you no. I just got told no for something the other day, actually. Um, And you just need to be like, all right, fine. Next thing, Um, which is easier said than done. But the more time you times you do that, you build resilience and you build confidence in yourself. And if you can have those two things, you'll be able to make it pretty far. I like to think so. All right, before we let you go, I want to get your predictions. Uh, who who do you think will win the Super Bowl? I don't know. Taylor Swift. <laughs> oh, come on. I love Taylor Swift. Um, no, I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Um, I just think the Chiefs know how to win. And I know that sounds silly, but, like, when you just, like, have been there before and you know how to win, I just think, like, you figure it out no matter how bad a game gets. Like, you've already been there. So, I'll pick the Chiefs, um, not because of Taylor Swift. I do love her though, but I'll pick the Chiefs. <laughs> I got the Chiefs also, and uh, actually, I had the opportunity to interview Mahomes' father on the show. Oh, awesome. yeah, he, he's awesome and That's great so family. Cool. And I eventually ended up getting 
connected with Tavi Hunt, uh, the owner's wife of wow. the yeah. So they they she's been seeing my stuff and she saw the interview with Mahomes' father and then and after that, I think she shared it with a couple. Of, I think she shared it to the Chiefs front office and and then uh, ever since then, Tavi has been seeing. I mean, giving support every. Ever since that interview happened, she's been giving us support ev the, the, every year. That's awesome. Let's yeah. go. I got to go with the Chiefs. Every, I, 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 I'm a, when I'm not working in media, I'm a Cowboys fan. But when okay. I'm when I'm in media, I, obviously, you you know this. We got to be neutral. We, can, I'm, we can't be biased. We got to be neutral. But I'm always I, until someone beats the Chiefs, I'm going to I'm going I'm, I'm picking the Chiefs every every year until someone beats them. Okay. That's because, All right. Because I'm. <laughs> I'm connected with them now, and then and then uh, that no one can beat them right now. This is this is I don't know how they do it. It's just it's crazy. Winners win. That's all I have to say is winners win. But uh, Maria Tri Tribal Peace, where can I where can our fans find you on social media? Yeah, so Instagram, I'm at underscore Maria Tribal Peace, and then on Twitter, I believe I'm M underscore Tribal Peace. My sister is also like underscore M Tribal Peace. So just make sure it's Maria and not Marissa. Um, but yeah, so I don't think many people have my last name. So if you just type in my last name, you should be able to find it. Speaking of your sis uh your sister's a softball player too, right? Yeah, I have two sisters. They both play softball. Oh so. wow. What's well, yeah. the well, one, one one graduated. Um, I'm the oldest. So she I played softball at Fordham. My middle sister played softball at Drexel University in Philadelphia, and then my youngest sister played two years at Michigan State, and now she's in her second year at USF. So she's a senior at South Florida. Wow. Um, so there you have it, Maria Tribal Peace, multimedia sports journalist. Uh, man, like, like I said, Jill of all trades, she does everything. Go follow her on social media right now. And uh, thank you to our fans for tuning in and asking great questions. And Maria, thank you for joining the show. Uh, we would love to have you back on the show at some point again. And also, I would love to meet you in person and then do some collaboration stuff with you too. For sure. Thank you so much for having me. This was awesome. Um, And yeah, we'll have to do it again sometime. Yeah, thank you. Anytime and keep up the great work. Thank you so much.